Hello everyone. So recently I experimented with uh, serverless tools on GCP and um, I needed to have a task that would periodically perform some logic and eventually send out uh, some requests to the third party API. Um, my requirements were uh, to make sure that I control how many requests per second I sent to the third party API and uh, I want to see um, which ones failed and as, as well as the ability to retry them and have a dead letter queue, such as, such as I could go to the GUI and um, uh, see all, all the failed requests and see what's wrong with them, analyze them, etc. If you ever used a Rails sidekick, this is what I was looking for, uh, but managed on GCP. And um, of course, I didn't want to uh, perform um, a lot of work to set up um, any infrastructure uh, because this was a, such a simple task on my end. And uh, that's when I actually found um, Cloud Functions and Cloud Tasks. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, Cloud Functions allow us um, to, to quickly drag and drop our code into Google's runtime engine and Google will handle the rest for us, uh, scaling, maintaining uh, the environment, etc. And then um, Cloud Tasks is when we actually want to send out the request to the third-party API. So we could have our cloud function that could fetch a bunch of records from a database or from other source. And uh, for each record that it fetched, it would transform it and then send those records to a third-party API. And that's where we use our cloud tasks to do that. Um, cloud tasks basically uh, uses a queue. So there, there's a managed queue by GCP and uh, we create a tasks. Tasks are basically uh, HTTP requests. Uh, it has a URL body, headers, etc. And we put those tasks into the queue and Google will uh, trigger, uh, will pick up each task from the queue. It will uh, send, uh, send it to the third party API and uh, it would manage uh, uh, rate limiting as we defined. And uh, we have a dead letter queue as well. So let me actually go to the next uh, slide. I created a little diagram to demonstrate this. So we could have a cloud scheduler or just a pops up topic here or just an HTTP request that our cloud function will be listening on. Uh, as soon as uh, it is triggered, uh, it will then uh, fetch whatever records needed from a third party source, database, etc. And then for each of those items, it would just create these little tasks and put them into the queue. And Google will then uh, process these tasks um, one at a time or n number of times as you define. And uh, this task will then uh, uh, send your HTTP request to the third party API. And that's pretty much it. And I think that uh, cloud tasks and cloud functions, they go well together. So I would like to actually demonstrate um, coding um, a simple cloud function and a simple cloud tasks. So I have prepared some Terraform to create our resources. Of course, you can do this through the GUI, but in my case, I just want to define it in the code as infrastructure. I created a bucket, and this bucket is what will contain our code. This is where the cloud function will actually look for to get the code out during the deployment. And this is our cloud function. As we can see here, we define the bucket and the path where it will live, cloud functions main.zip and the entry point, and it's a HTTP trigger, some environmental variables that will be available, and uh, permissions. Uh, in this case, anybody can hit this. It, it will be an open to the world. So let's initialize our node module. I'm going to give it all the defaults. Then uh, let's create our function. I'm going to use async await syntax, and this function will accept our request and a response. And all it will do, it will simply return a status 200 and uh, some text, maybe a hello world. Then uh, I would like to uh, build this app. Uh, I'm going to use Express in this case. So our app is uh, Express. Let's imp require the Express. And um, we need a body parser, of course, uh, because we're going to be posting to this. Uh, here, if you'd like to add custom routes, uh, it's up to you. But by def but by the de by default, it will actually go to the my function, and let's return it. And we want to export this out. 
and I forgot we need an index. Uh, an index is what we'll, Google will call by default, so um, let's actually re require our function and again export it. And uh, let's not forget to actually install Express. Let me remove the node modules before we package this. Google will install them before deployment, then I'll zip everything up. I will drag and drop our main.zip into our storage that we created. Then I will go ahead and use gcloud CLI to deploy this. We need to specify the project as well as the source, the path where uh, the code lives. And of course the name of the function, which is my function. Oops. All right, so let it deploy and it will give us information on the deployment after it's done. And it's done. So let's actually get the trigger uh, your URL for this. So we can actually trigger our cloud function. Let, I'm going to just uh, get it, uh, send a get request to this and it should uh, send us uh, our hello world back. And we got our hello world. Now we need to actually uh, modify our Terraform and uh, add the queue in there. Of course you can do this through the GUI and I have prepared some code here. So we actually uh, uh, define our queue, we define some rate limits on it and the negative one retry means an infinite retrying. Then uh, we'll actually apply this, let it apply and this will create a queue in GCP. So if we actually search for cloud tasks here, we can see that uh, our queue got created. Right now there is nothing in here, but as soon as we add some records, we'll see items here. So let's now actually install Google Cloud Tasks and modify our function. We'll import Google Tasks Client. So now let's enqueue some records in our function. These records could be obtained from a database or from third-party API. For now, I'll just define them as a constant. They're going to be just objects that will have a name. And let's create our NQ function. It will accept a record. We'll create our task. So we'll need to define our HTTP request. This will contain HTTP method. Let's do post. We need to define URL, which is our third party API. For now, I'll just use this public toilet that you can post or get anything and you can actually view the logs here. So I'll just post that here. We'll add some headers, some common ones, application JSON, content type, and the body, which is going to be our record. And that's pretty much it for the task. Uh, we'll also cr create our client. Uh, typically you would want to have this client to be some global, but for now it's fine. I'll, I'll just create it every single time we call in queue. We'll create our parent. And finally we'll create our request. And then we'll actually add it to the queue. And let's just log it out. So our NQ function is complete. Oops, I forgot to add post because we're posting to that uh, website. Let's again deploy this. We'll package it up and drag and drop our main that zip into our bucket. And while that uploads, we can go ahead and start the deployment. Okay, again, we're going to trigger our function. And this time, as soon as it, uh, it is triggered, we should see that there are tasks in the queue. Oh, as we can see, uh, completed in the last minute, two of them. And if we refresh here, we actually can see the two requests that made it here. 
and with our body request uh, A and request B. So now I would like to show what happens if the request fails. For example, the third party API could be down or um, you have a bad payload and they return 400. For example, you cannot post to Google. And uh, we'll again deploy our function and our each cloud task will try attempt to post to Google, but because it will fail, we'll actually see this being retried in our queue. So again, uh, let's deploy it. Typically, you would want to automate this in your Jenkins or other uh, CI/CD pipeline. Again, let's go ahead and uh, trigger our cloud function. It will enqueue the, uh, enqueue the two records, but those two records will always be stuck in our queue because Google is returning 400 every time you attempt to post to it. So we can actually, here we can actually see that there are two tasks in the queue. Uh, they have been retried seven times already. We can see the payload, the headers, and likewise for the other one. And there you have it, cloud functions with cloud tasks. There's so much more you can do with this. You can set up VPC connector into your network and have your cloud functions communicate with your cluster. You can add OpenID authentication among cloud functions and other services. Or if you have multiple cloud functions, you can set up custom routing using cloud run and cloud endpoints, etc. Overall, Google serverless tools are my new favorite. They provide an easy and a quick way to get your code out there without setting up lots of infrastructures and they let developers focus on business logic. Thanks for watching.